We're going to be talking about uh, vertical fillet welds today. Yesterday we did uh, horizontal fillet welds. Last week we did flat fillet welds. Now we're going to move on to vertical fillet welds. Now as you can see, I've already taken the time and took my, my handy dandy post here. Okay, this was our, our padding project from uh, a couple weeks ago. And all I did was I created a fillet or a T-joint and tacked it up here. Remember, just a couple of tacks down here at the bottom of your, uh, of your pipe holding onto the table. The more you weld on it, the, the more you're gonna have to grind it off. Uh, we're gonna be using 7018 332 nd electrode today. Um, you know, just because, like once again, when we talked about our padding, this is easier to manipulate in the vertical position starting out than like the eighth inch electrode. So we're gonna be going with the 332nd electrode because that's what you guys are going to be using, okay? My machine's set at 83 amps right now. Uh, you know, so remember 7018, 332nd, you're gonna be running between 75 and 100 amps. If you're using the eighth inch rod, you're gonna be welding between 115 and 130 or 140 amps. So a lot less heat means uh, a lot less droopage that we're gonna have here in our weld. Uh, remember, we're working against gravity, so anytime we pull our electrode out of the puddle, that puddle is going to start to sag, okay? 7018, we're going to be at about a five to 10 degree angle pushing up, okay? Remember, we're not welding like this, all right, we are welding with our angle pointing up, okay? Now you notice how I put some clamps here, you know, once again, those clamps are to help me rather than trying to, you know, hold my, my hands here and, you know, start to sway. Those clamps are to help me get comfortable because if not, I'd be all the way down here, okay? So you can take a clamp. It's not, it's not anything that's bad. It's not saying you're a bad weld or anything. Because first thing you want to do when you start welding in any position is get comfortable, okay? Nice and easy way to get comfortable. Rest right on there, okay? We're going to make sure that we can go from point A to point B, which is from the start to the finish, okay? If this was too low, I might struggle a little bit trying to get up here all the way to the top, okay? So, 83 amps, 7018, 332nd. And I am going to stick this, remember we have our slots in here, I'm going to stick this with our angle up. You, know, you can also stick it in like this, but um, you know, you're going to have a, you know, a weird angle on your hand. So let's take this, stick it in here on an angle. This is going to be a new electrode. Now, remember, just like last time we were talking about 7018, 332nd, this is like a very brittle rod. So if you're doing a lot of shaking, that rod's going to do a lot of moving. So you want to make sure that you're nice and relaxed. You don't want to be squeezing this, uh, this handle because then you're going to start to shake. Okay, nice and relaxed. Try not to move this rod very much at all because then you're going to get undercut on each side here. Okay, so our first pass, we're going to start down at this, uh, the base, work our way to the top, okay? Now, once again, this is a 90 degree angle here so our first pass here, we're gonna split it right in half at a 45 degrees. So technically we're straight on, but it's a 45 degree angle because this is set at a 90 degree. We're gonna start here, five to 10 degree angle pushing up. Make sure that we're gonna keep our electrode nice and close into our pot, about a 16th of an inch away. Okay, here we go. Remember to raise that elbow as you're going up. That'll help you keep your angle in this electrode.
Remember, once you get to the top, you want to push over that edge. You don't want to stop directly at the top. Okay, you want to keep pushing over top of that edge. All right, give it a second to cool down. Remember, the cleaner the weld, the better off you're going to be. You always want to go through, double check, make sure there's no slag on the edges. Okay, and we'll take a look at our initial pass here. Okay, good tie-ins on our toes. Nice and even across both sides. That's what you want to have. Our second pass just like in the horizontal position, except where we can start at any end that we want to. Preferably on the side that has the thicker metal or the more metal, uh, which would be this side. And it's, if you're right-handed, it's gonna be easier for you anyway, okay? We had a 45 degree angle, which was straight on to start out. Now we're gonna take at 45, same angles that we're dealing with in horizontal, 70 and 30, okay? We're gonna move at about 30 degrees, and we're gonna take away that right half of that first pass, okay? All the way up, and then the second pass, we're going to take that, that 30 degrees and we're gonna move it to uh, about 70 degrees towards the other side, okay? Root pass, you're going to be going slower with, okay? With these uh, second and third passes, you can go a little bit faster with because you've already bonded those two metals together, now you are reinforcing those welds. Okay, so we can go a little bit faster now. Okay. About a 30 degree angle. Okay, just to show you guys, this is about how much of a speed difference there was between that first and second pass. Okay, we saved about four inches or three inches of rod. Okay, so second, third passes are much faster than the first pass. Okay, here's our second pass. Okay, notice how we've taken away half of that first pass. Okay. Okay, so first pass was at a 45 degree angle. Second was about a 30 degree angle. Now it's third pass, we're going to be tying that second pass that we just laid into this base metal on the top. So about a 70 degree angle, tying that previous weld into this plate. Now remember, it's always important to tie the previous weld into your weld before you tie that previous weld into this edge, okay? So if you think that you're maybe over too far and you might need to have two passes in here to tie into this, that's okay. Don't try and just weld onto this side and leave a big gap in the center because that's where you're gonna trap all of your slack, okay? I'm gonna start here, about a 70 degree angle.
Got our weld cool. If you perform your weld correctly, just a little bit of scraping will be able to remove that slack. Okay, here's our two pass cover, which is three passes total. All right, now, so we have our first pass in the center, two passes over top of that. Now, we're going to build three passes across. So we're gonna have that 30 degree angle the, on the right side. We're gonna bring it back to a 45, which is center on the, uh, the middle. And then we're going to tilt that uh, to about a 70 degree angle, okay? Our angle should look like this. Here, 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 okay? Do that again, here. It should, it should be nice and, and flat across there, okay? Notice how when I get up here to the top, I'm pushing that rod over. I'm not stopping right here, pushing that rod over. I'm laying a little bit of weld right on top of that, uh, that material. Okay, here's our pass number four. In a normal situation, you know, we would let this cool down a little bit before we went any farther or turn our amperage down a little bit because we're starting to get just a tiny bit of undercut on the side here. real nice. Now we're going to be about a 45 degree angle, which is straight on, filling in that gap.
All right, so here's pass five. Remember right there in that center. Now you can see on the left hand side there, there's like a little bit of a drop and that's where that pass number six is gonna go. Okay, we're gonna be going right here. All right, now we're gonna take our sixth and, and final pass for the demonstration at a, a 70 degree angle, tying that bead number two, or uh, five, right in the center, into our base metal on the left hand side. Let our puddle cool for a sec. And, and by letting that puddle cool, you're making it easier to remove that slab. Now naturally, depending on what it is that you would be welding, you know, you would probably be filling this up all the way to the, uh, all the way to the end. Okay, so here's our, our pass number six. Notice how on the top, we're building up on the top. And then when we start down here at the bottom, we're starting below the material itself. We're not starting, you know, a quarter inch or a half inch in um, the material. So that's what we have. 7018, 332nd, vertical fillet weld, run on 83 amps. So this was a six pass uh, cover here, okay?